Welcome to Certified Emergency Nurse Practice Test. Our topic today is Environment and Toxicological Emergencies. Use the link in the description to download the app on the App Store for free practice tests. Number 1. A patient in the emergency department is diagnosed with West Nile virus. Which of the following is the mode of transmission for this disease? A. Bite of an infected tick. B. Bite of an infected flea. C. Bite of infected mosquito. D. Bite of an infected spider. The correct answer is C. Bite of an infected mosquito. Explanation. West Nile virus is caused by the bite of a mosquito. First discovered in the US in 1999, it is believed that the virus is actually carried by infected birds. The mosquito bites the bird and then bites a person. Mosquitoes carry the highest amount of virus in the early fall, typically, rates of the reported disease increase in late August and early September. As mosquitoes die off in cold weather, the incidence of disease decreases. Number 2. A patient is brought to the emergency department with multiple bee stings. Which of the following should not be done as part of treatment? A. Watch for signs of allergic reaction. B. Carefully remove the stingers with tweezers. C. Apply ice to stings. D. Administer tetanus prophylaxis if needed. The correct answer is B. Carefully remove the stingers with tweezers. Explanation. Tweezers should never be used to remove stingers, since squeezing the stinger may inject more venom into the wound. Instead, use a scalpel or other instrument to scrape across the stinger. Number 3. The Occupational Safety and Health Administration has very strict standards for hospital employees who may encounter hazardous materials or patients who have been exposed to them. Which of the following is not included in regulations? A. Respiratory protection must be provided to all employees who might be exposed. B. Reigning on respiratory protection must be provided. C. Employers must provide personal protective equipment to all employees. D. All emergency department personnel must be trained in decontamination procedures. The correct answer is D. All emergency department personnel must be trained in decontamination procedures. Explanation. All emergency department personnel should have first responder awareness of hazmat situations, but may or may not be trained in decontamination procedures. However, any emergency department employee who will be participating in decontamination must be trained in the process. Number 4. What is the most common problem associated with a heat inhalation injury? A. Obstruction due to increasing mucosal edema. B. Lower airway damage. C. Lung damage. D. None of the above. The correct answer is A. Obstruction due to increasing mucosal edema. Explanation. The primary damage with heat inhalation injury is potential upper airway obstruction due to increasing mucosal edema. This can happen at any time during the first 48 hours after injury. For this reason, these patients must be closely monitored for several days following exposure. Number 5. Which body system usually shows symptoms first in a radiation injury? A. Neurovascular. B. Gastrointestinal. C. Hematopoietic. D. Skin. The correct answer is C. Hematopoietic. Explanation. Bone marrow stem cells and accessory cells are extremely radiosensitive, and exposure to radiation results in rapid cellular death and alterations in how blood components are formed. Sepsis and hemorrhage are typical results of these alterations. Number 6. A child is being discharged to home with a diagnosis of ringworm. What information should be included in discharge instructions? A. The infection is caused by a worm and cannot be passed from person to person. B. The infection is caused by a virus and can be passed from person to person. C. The infection is caused by bacteria and cannot be passed from person to person. D. The infection is caused by a fungus and can be passed from person to person. The correct answer is D. The infection is caused by a fungus and can be passed from person to person. Explanation. Ringworm is caused by a fungus and not by a worm as its name implies. 
This infection can be passed easily from one person to another. The fungus can also be passed through infected items such as combs, clothing, or shower surfaces. Pets can also carry the fungus. Number 7. A patient with a heroin overdose must stay in the emergency department with monitoring due to the long half-life of opiates. What is the half-life of Narcan? A. 15 to 30 minutes. B. 30 to 60 minutes. C. 60 to 90 minutes. D. 2 hours. The correct answer is B 30 to 60 minutes. Explanation. The half-life of Narcan is 30 to 60 minutes and may need repeat administration due to the longer half-life of opiates. The goal is to prevent respiratory depression to the point of apnea. Number 8. What is the greatest threat of severe alcohol intoxication? A. Hypoglycemia. B. Aspiration. C. Hypomagnesemia. D. All of the above. The correct answer is B. Aspiration. Explanation. The greatest risk of severe alcohol intoxication is an aspiration. Make sure to assess the patient's level of consciousness and position the patient where the airway is protected. You may even have to intubate the patient. In addition, hypoglycemia is a risk, but not the greatest threat. In addition, hypomagnesemia is an electrolyte disturbance in chronic alcoholics who are at risk of developing encephalopathy. Number 9. Gastric lavage is indicated within an hour of ingestion for all of the following medications except A. Digitalis B. Cholinergic agents C. Acids or alkalis D. Ethylene glycol The correct answer is C. Acids or alkalis Explanation Ingestion of acids and alkalis can cause gastric perforation Dilution is the recommended treatment with copious amounts of water, then have them drink milk. Number 10. A patient reports smoking Jimson weed. He appears very anxious and has visual hallucinations. The patient is having which response to the Jimson weed? A. Opiate response. B. Barbiturate response. C. Sympathomimetic response. D. Anticholinergic response. The correct answer is D. Anticholinergic response. Explanation. Jimson weed is an anticholinergic, which causes confusion, hallucination and potentially seizures. In addition, it causes an increase in blood pressure, heart rate, temperature, and pupillary size. Treatment for these patients can be large doses of benzodiazepines to reduce heart rate and agitation, cooling blankets to cool the patient, or haldol for psychosis. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel for updated videos every week.